Hi everyone, thanks for joining me today for the first look at CloudPods 2.0. We've been working on CloudPods 2.0 for just over a year now, close to three and a half thousand hours of development and it is very nearly ready for you. This week we started beta testing in live environments, which is the final stage of testing. If that all goes well, we'll be looking to make CloudPods 2.0 available to everyone in December. You'll still have access to the current point of sale, so everyone can give it a try and get used to it at their own pace before we fully switch over to 2.0 next year. We'll be hosting a number of training webinars, which will go into more step-by-step -step detail, so keep an eye on your inbox for those invitations. CloudPods is designed to make retail processes easier and faster, so you and your team can get more done. CloudPods 2.0 is faster, it's more intuitive, and it's easy to use on a tablet too. Everyone I've spoken to so far who's used 2.0 has commented on just how slick and fast it is. Those speed improvements help everyone to work quickly, which is especially important when you've got customers waiting in a queue or a load of web orders to get through before cutoff. Regularly used endpoints like Customer Quick Search and the Item Quick Search show an average 60% speed increase for the request. That means on average it's 60% faster to bring up the results you need. The Item Search Grid and Customer Search Grid is also over 125% faster, cutting that wait time by more than half. Transaction posting is now 59% faster. So you've got speed improvements right through the process. Now, these are all just averages. Some of the testing results are super fast, like tiny fraction of a second. So let's take a look at the highlights. Largely, this is the same platform with just a fresh look on top. So the functionality is the same. There are a few improvements which I'll point out to you in terms of the flow of things and how POS scales on different screen sizes, but the functionality at its core is the same. As you can see, we've got a fresh new design and it's super tablet friendly. It scales really well for iPads and it's been designed for the, from the very start with tablets in mind. If you want to use an iPad or Microsoft Surface, for example, you'll find 2.0 much easier and smoother to use. It means you can take CloudPods round the store when you're with the customer, building an order with them. So instead of talking about all these great products and helping them to find the right gear for their needs, and then having to take them over to a till point while they wait for you to build the transaction, uh, you can do it while, while you're just on the go going around the store with them for that really top class personal customer service. Now, this is a bit of a crude demonstration, but if I just change the size of my viewport, You can see here how the top bars across the top of the search, as I bring that narrow, so more like a tablet kind of shape, they're stacked up on top of each other to make it easier to use on a tablet. So it's a nice, clear layout. It's easy to see your transaction info at a glance, and it's more intuitive to find whatever action you need. Now we've added these keyboard shortcuts here down to the bottom. This isn't visible on a tablet because it's not relevant, but for busy people, having those keyboard shortcuts uh, is a really easy way just to make things that little bit faster for stuff you're doing all the time. And we've also got this suggestion box here so you can go through to Canny and add in any suggestions for extra shortcuts that you would find useful. So this menu down the left-hand side, Oh, uh, bear with me one minute. So this menu down the left hand side um, basically replaces the actions menu. It's organized into themed sections. So you've got sales and returns, customer orders, customers, the till and so on. It's more logical and easy to find what you need. And the menu is dynamic. So if I just pin this out so it stays where it is, um, and then I set Sally as a customer, you can see the options that are in the customer section have changed. 
So it only shows options that are relevant for the transaction that you've got on the screen. So I'll just clear Sally off and unpin that menu so I can show you the new sales dashboard that we have added. So this gives you a quick overview of sales. Um, it gives you speedy instant access to some top level sales data at a glance. So you can set the time period that you want to look at here, whether that's today, this week or this month. And you can select which store you want to look at as well. Now, this is just the top level data. So the total sales value, number of transactions and the number of items per transaction. Obviously, for more detailed reporting, you've got cloud reports. This is just an easy way to check in through the day and see where you're up to. You can also see this handy comparison to the previous period, so previous day, week or month, depending on what you've selected. And you can see a brief summary sentence here in all of these boxes uh, just to compare to that previous period. There's also a visual representation of that below. Right at the bottom, we've got a breakdown of department of sales for that time period. So it's a simple chart that shows you how each department is doing, just a really useful, quick insight and a handy visual representation. And you've always got this data and much more in cloud reports. We've also added an external link section here. Now, I know most of you will have these bookmarked anyway, but it's just an easy way to navigate to other areas of the Cloudforce platform. Across the top, we have the uh, search, search bars. So it's a super fast item search, customer search and recall orders, all easily available up at the top. You can quick search or scan in the white bar. And this is a really powerful search. So you don't need to put the words in the right order, just like you would in a grid. So I can just search for, say, Evoc pants. Uh, and we can see all the results there. So you don't also need to hit enter. So as soon as you pause typing, it will run the search. And that's the same for the customer search too. So I'll just add that item to my transaction. So as well as quick search, you can click on the green icon next to the search bar there to open the item grid. And that's the same for customers and recall orders too. So again, up at the top, you've got your powerful search here. So you can search for any combination of words and that search the item lookup code and the description field. Beneath that, we've got a show local stock only button. So this used to be a tick box in one of the column headers, but it's now much more prominent and easy to find. So this will filter to show only products available at your current store. This is great for retailers with more than one stock location or store, as you, so you can easily see what's on hand for the customer right now where you are. Now, I'm just using a testing setup today, so the data I've got is not realistic for a normal business, but I want to show you this functionality, so bear with me. So if we take a look at, say, a Vento jersey. In the item grid, you've got this stock detail link that will enable you to see stock um, in other stores. And right at the bottom here, you've got the option to see if, it's a, if you've got supplier integration and it's a SIM item, you can see if the supplier's got any stock of that as well. You can also see if it's on any purchase orders, transfers, and then also any customer orders as well. I'm just going to hit this back button to head back to the item grid. So you can manage the view of this grid as well. So we've got this manage view button. So here you can uh, tick which, uh, which columns you'd like to see. So you might want to hide price. I don't know why you'd want to do that. Um, but say, you know, you might want to hide season. And you can also change the order, so you can move the description about, you can move any of these columns about to what, how you'd like it to be. And there we go. So these settings will stay set even if the cashiers switch. It only goes back to the default view when you completely log out. When you're typing to filter in the, in the grid, again, you don't need to hit enter to search. When you type, it will upgrade the grid when you pause typing. Uh, that's great for tablets, it's just one less key to hit. Search words do need to be in the correct order for filtering the grid though. But again, you've got that powerful search up at the top 
So I'll just hit this cross and head back to my transaction. So it's easy to see the summary detail uh, of the transaction on the main screen. And if you need more info about any item, you can hit this drop down. Uh, and you can see further information and you've got more options here as well, say for setting a discount. So if I want to go through to set a discount, um, let's say I'm going to do a discount percentage on the current price. and I'm going to set that to 5%. I can apply that. And we can see we've got the discount set there and you can also see it over here in the summary box as well on the right hand side. So this shows all the key transaction info, the bits in blue lead to actions you can take and they were also all present in the left hand menu as well as the transaction segment. So I'll just set myself as the customer. Cool, and you can see some key customer info in this summary box as well. So you can see you've got the customer rewards value nice and handy on the screen there, as well as the total sales, which is a great indication of how much a customer buys from you. It also shows their contact details, and crucially, it adds this red dot and please request when either an email or a phone number is missing. So the cashier can ask the customer, uh, just click here to edit, can add in the missing info, Hit save, and we can see that information has been added there. So you can also see all of the customer comms here as well once you've got your customer set. So you can see what messages have been sent and received, and this is both email and SMS, as well as any notes on the customer account. So you can filter this using the button up here. So you can filter by date. You can have a look at whether you just want to look at maybe SMS or emails. Um, cool, so I'm just going to suspend that transaction. So this button's now uh, underneath the tender button, nice and prominent, so it's easy to find. That's great, and we'll come back to that later. So we've also made improvements to the customer account. So you can now specifically target which transaction the customer is paying off. So if I set John James as our customer, we can see here in the summary box that he's got some money owed on his account. We can head into that. You can see the different transactions there. We can select which one we want to pay off. Hit to pay off and then that takes you through where you can tender it from there. So this is tied into the work that we've done on customer account statements showing the age of debt. So you can pay off the oldest transaction and get an accurate picture of how old the remaining debt is. So I'll just no sell that transaction and then I'm going to head over into the sales and return menu to bring up my suspended transaction from earlier. So I can recall that. Cool. And we'll go through to tender. So the tender screen has been redesigned so it shows the top two uh, tender types that have been set in the back office. Most in-store transactions are cash or card, so they are the defaults. Um, the others are at the bottom, so you can select them as you need to, but it's that bit faster for the majority of transactions with just car, uh, cash and credit card. Web orders will automatically set the correct tender type, so the functionality there is all the same. So that brings us to the end of the first look into CloudPods 2.0. As I said at the beginning, we've just started beta testing, which is the final stage of testing before we'll make it available to everyone. If that all goes well, we'll be looking to make CloudPods 2.0 available to everyone in December. You'll still have access to the current point of sale, so everyone can try it out and get used to it at their own pace before we fully switch over to 2.0 next year. We'll be hosting a number of training webinars, which will go into more step-by-step -step detail. So keep an eye on your in inbox for those invitations. And don't forget to like and subscribe to stay up to date with the latest product news and updates from Citrus Line. I'll see you in the next one.